did not involve your top two finishers, your even money favorite remains your winner to start off this pick four sequence. Welcome to the show. Greg Wolf Macarruthers with you, and we got uh, some star power joining us right now. Uh, we'll good. send out two in the feature coming up this weekend. That is the Gravesend. Linda Rice joining us on the line. We've been doing this show uh, a long, long time, Linda. I don't think I've ever had the chance to talk to you, so good to have you on the line. How Hi, are Linda. you? Uh, I'm good, Greg. Thank you for having me. Hello, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm, I'm excited about the, uh, the Gray's End on Saturday. I'm guessing you are as well. Uh, yes, I am. Um, you know, it's a small field, and it's nice to have two in a small field anywhere, but um, uh, I'm excited about the race. Well, you, you got two horses. It's a pretty tough race. Yeah, you got two horses who combined between them have close to a million dollars in earnings. And, and let's start with Royal Courier, um, a horse who, who is moving to your barn and a horse who is in the past a track record in the Gallant Bob. I believe that came last year, 107 and 2 in that race last year. Tell us what you know about this horse who used to be with Patricia Farrow. Well, obviously, you can tell by his form, he's, he's really been a, a very nice horse. And, they uh, had done very well with him, and I was uh, very pleased to be able to pick him up. Uh, Matt Stable wanted to raise some horses in New York this year, so they moved a, about 10 of them to me in New York, and I was very happy to get him. Um, he's been a little off form his last couple of races, and I'm hoping we can get him turned around. Yeah, because when he's right, I mean, he's a horse that used to be just lightning, lightning quick, and he's still really fast, and that, that's he's at his best, right, when... He breaks out of the gate sharply and is able to, to, to utilize that pace advantage that he generally has over his competition? Yeah, I think he's uh, he obviously, on his, on a, he looks like he likes the lead. He can lay second. That's where he's run his best races. Um, I think he's been a bit of a gate issue. He was scratched behind the gates in the grade one, I think, to Jerome, um, having uh, flipped over in the gates. So I've done some gate work with him. I hope that he breaks sharper, and that helps him. Well, and I guess that DeFrancis Memorial Dash, who you said he was banged up a little bit. How's he doing, and what was the issue there? He came out with some inflammation on a hind leg. Uh, he's had a foot abscess in the right front. You know, several kind of nitpicky things, nothing, you know, career ending. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll get him back into good form. Okay, and then you, you have Frazzle, six-year-old gelding. Who, I mean, both these horses just have unbelievable records. Royal Courier, 12 for 28, and then Frazzle at 13 for 27. And, you know, we're showing the Graves End from Frazzle um, last year in which he was able to win this race. While people enjoy this race, let me ask you about his last start. That was a race in which Head Hard Hoof, who's also a, a real classy old racehorse, was able to get the lead, um, kind of be by himself in the front and go gate to wire and earn a 98 buyer. So, that was, you know, it was kind of a sneaky good second, wasn't it, in his last start? Because Head Hard Hoof was able to control things from the gate. Yeah, it was. I mean, he hadn't run in since February. Frazzle yeah. hadn't, and I think Head Hard Hoof kind of, you know, speed popped the field, got away from everybody, and um, you know, it was a good place to get started for Frazzle. He put in a good effort, and and uh, I hope you know he comes back with a big one here Saturday. Now he's kind of the horse for course in this race, Frazzle. He loves it. It looks, it seems, over the inner dirt. Does he sort of? Become, he's a defending champ as well, just become a different horse on this surface? You know, he's been pretty consistent. I've raced him in New York last year. I ran him 13 times, in, you know, between Belmont, Saratoga, and, and Aqueduct. Most of his good races were at Aqueduct, but he won at Saratoga. He's won at Belmont. Um, I like, you know, I prefer not to ship him if I can keep him in New York. And, uh, you know, I gave him the summer off. He was just suffering from a little few issues, showing some stress, and I thought he'd come back strong, so... Hopefully he'll have a good, a good 2013. So where are your your horses this winter? You're going to obviously have a fair amount of horses in New York, but you're also going to have a, a stable at, at Penn National, I was reading as well. Is that true? Yes. I've got horses stable at Gulfstream, and I, I typically do New York and Miami in the winter, mm -hmm. um, but I, I've taken a small group over to Penn National. Just horses that don't fit in New York, and they yeah. need a place where they can eat. And it just doesn't make sense to keep them in New York. They don't belong here. So uh, it's just a good avenue. They offer a lot of conditions there. We can win some races with them and let them earn some money. And you kind of grew up in that area, right? I did. I grew up at Penn National. My father was a trainer there, and my brothers rode races there. So it's uh, familiar territory. All right. Well, Linda, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Best of luck uh, this weekend and uh, on into 2013 as well. But we'll be watching in the Gravesend. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Linda.
All right, she's got Frazzle. She's got a horse that just came under her care in Royal Courier. Who, I mean, both these horses are warriors. 12 for 28 record for Royal Courier. Frazzle's won 13 of 27. Well, have you looked this at this entire field, though? I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, Saginaw is going to be the main competition for Linda Rice. 15 wins, six seconds from 33 starts, and nine for 12 this year at the age of six. Yeah, unreal.